All right, hi everybody. We're working on an app that uses AI to crop faces from an image and then we make a sticker out of it. You can use this in the messaging app or whatever you want. So in the previous devlog, we got working the model and the main function of the, the model. So uh, this is what it looked like, some tests that I did uh, yesterday. Today we're going to work uh, on the server and the future of what we're going to do. Yeah, so now we're going to see some improvements about the sticker maker function that we did in the previous one and see what we did there. All right, so here's the current state of the design of the application. We have here the like the first page uh, that the user is going to see. The design is targeted for a mobile for a mobile for a mobile application. I can't make an Android version yet because I had problems with the Android developer account, but I, I'm sorting that out. So uh, for now, I'm going to make a web app that is sort of for a mobile, and then I'm going to adapt this to a web to a web uh, version. Uh, the issue is this, and I think the description is real clear. You upload a face with an image, uh, an image with a face, uh, they make a sticker and you give it, uh, and the app gives it um, the sticker. So if you get, uh, if you click in settings, uh, this pop-up uh, goes out and you can select if you want the border, uh, a shadow, a soft edges, uh, and get the neck of the face. Also, you can choose the border color and then you can set apply. Then this is work in progress. And this is also a work in progress, but I'm, I'm really liking it the way it's going. So when you receive you, your sticker, uh, basically you have sort of some sort of analytics. Uh, I think that uh, so, some are cool. Then you can name it and share it with this button right, right here or get the sticker. If you share it and give it a name, I'm going to make also an explore tab so people can share their stickers and their uh, funny faces and whatnot. I think this is a cool idea to get the community involved in the project. And also in the future, I can make a user feature so users can have their accounts and their, save their sticker there and, and also share them. Um, yeah, so you, you can click in the the sticker and get to the owners of that sticker. I don't know that I think that might be cool. So yeah, I didn't start the web version yet, but I think it's going to be pretty straightforward to adapt this to the web page. Uh, but nevertheless, the app is targeted for web, uh, for mobile, and it's it's a good thing to have a version in the web. So that's going to be awesome. So I think I'm going to do this with React. So I think it's the best best option because I'm I'm familiar with the framework and I think it's not going to take me that long to uh, make this. So yeah. All right. So now we're going to see how the server works for the rendering of the stickers and then how we're going to serve this web app and make uh, the request to the uh, sticker maker function. All right, so here we are in the server that hosts the make a sticker function that we're going to use to render the stickers. And so let's start by naming some of the module that we are using. So the standard OS, the system and time, the IO, HTTP, and the sync IO, we are, we are using that for some dependencies of other modules right here. The Python image library, PIL, uh, and we are importing the image module. This module is for uh, all the things that you, you use for images. Here we are loading um, the bytes. I'm going to show that later. Uh, the path, uh, bytes.io, that's to decode bytes. Uh, then we're going to do, we, then we're using a random integer and then we're going to use the Starlet framework. The Starlet framework is a, a framework for <laughs> A synchronous server gateway interface. <laughs> I couldn't say that. So basically, it's a um, framework for um, for a server, and, and we're going to use that in conjunction with uh, Ubicorn. That is also this is a HGI server uh, running with a lot of things. So I, I'm not going 
maybe in the future I'm going to go and make full tutorials about this because it's really interesting. So, alright. Uh, what are we doing here? Is uh, This is doing nothing. Right. Uh, first, we're going to set the port to 5060, whatever. And um, the path. Uh, I think I'm not using this anymore. Um, yeah. So here we set the app to the Starlight framework. We add the middleware, the course that uh, allows us to have cross origin um, source from our um, our media. <clears throat> then we mount the public uh, directory if you want to get something from that. Uh, but I think this. Uh, we're going to see later the architecture of the server, uh, but I think I'm not going to use this server to render uh, the web app. Uh, I'm going to use a, a node with a React, and this is going to be sort of a private uh, um, server that is going to be inside the main server. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, bro. Whatever. So <clears throat> here we have the give sticker. Uh, main uh, um, input that is going to be in the route slash so it's going to be in the in the main root of the IP uh, and the, the port all right so let's get into the function we accept the f a file variable here from a form uh, type of request so a good cool thing about HGI is that we can use a sync IO, a sync and away that I, I wanted to say. So we're going to await for the request form and then with the read of these uh, bytes, right? So we have the image right here. Uh, this is a suffix. So if we receive a name that is not equal to nothing, we're going to return uh, the name or we're going to give in a random number from zero to this other number uh, and then if we receive and then if we receive a background color uh, we're going to set that to the background color uh, and here we um, sort of we pass that we, because we get a string of uh, three numbers separated separated by a, by, by a comma and then we set that to border color here I'm saving the original image, uh, but in practice or ideally, I want to, I want to make this all in line or in the memory, so I don't need to save the image and waste or store the user's data, waste uh, memory. I, I wanted to say. So here we have the save name, and here's the important part of this: is that with the Python image library build, uh, we open bytes from the uh, from the byte IO that decodes the bytes, okay, and we open that. We can get to RGB if we get a um, PNG all with alpha image. We convert that with, to RGB without alpha. We resize the the image to a maximum of 800 or 800 in either direction, height or, or width, uh, with anti-aliasing and with the with the to thumbnail a method, all right? We save the image and then we call the make sticker with the name of the um, with the name of the original image and the path we're going to be saved. All right. So ideally, what we're going to do uh, later is going to be all in line. Remember that this uh, make sticker returns the image, so. What I basically need to do is to send here a numpy, numpy array, and then the make sticker needs to uh, do their calculations and then make um, save this to a variable. And then here's where all of this kind of breaks out, and what I'm, I didn't do this in the first place because the file response needs to be saved it needs to be a file in the in the hard drive right so i'm going to see how i can do that, that. i think we're uh, streaming something that it was in the ovicorn uh, documentation i think i can do that and we with some uh, opencv 
encoding uh, images in a variable I think going to it's going, not going to be that difficult but yeah so to run the server so to run the server uh, here's the if name is equal to main uh, that is going to be run if we run the this file from the command line and if go is in the arguments uh, we're going to call ubicorn to host it in this uh, IP with the port that we said up there and with the, this app that is the starlight app. In production I'm going to change this to the IP of the server. Now I'm going to test the server with Postman that is uh, an app that sends uh, requests to servers and it's really useful so let's let's do that. Alright so first we're going to run the server so I found free And so we have here. Um, we're going to not. We are not going to use params. We're going to use the body of the request. Uh, as we can see here, it's going to be running uh, successfully. Uh, so we're going to send with a form data, and we're going to send files. So we select the image that we want. Uh, for example, this one uh, that is going to be in the file variable here uh, we make uh, we give it a name aha uh -huh, or something like that and uh, border color so we're going to we'll see and we send that request to the server and we're going to get our um, output so that's great as you can see uh, it crops the image and we, we give it a uh, border color also, this file is going to be saved in the server with this name. Let's see what else we can do. We're going to change this to 255 and see what else. So that uh, it changed the color. So that's awesome. Now we're going to be looking at uh, how the architecture of the server is going to be looking at. All right, so we're going to use uh, Nginx load balancing to do this. It might be a, a little bit of an overkill with this application, but it's uh, it's really fun to do this. And I never did a load balancing before, so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge maybe. So uh, yeah, all right. So we're going to use uh, Nginx and Node to serve the web application. I think we're going to use React to the um, for the web app, uh, so here's the user request that is going to request the web app. The Nginx load balancing uh, when uh, the user request a sticker is going to load, so it's going to send that request to three instances of the sticker maker uh, server that we uh, saw a moment ago. I think that is going to be it. Uh, so hopefully people use the app so I can justify that I made a load balancing. Alright, couldn't get the Rx proxy working, so we reacted to Unix socket, so that's going to be for the next part. By the way, I'm working on a review of the paper of the model that we're using, also a code round out of that. As I said, that is not only going to be for faces, so in the future I'm going to train with custom datasets to crop different things, like animals and other things. If you have an idea of what I can do, make a comment, subscribe if you want to see that. So now we're going to see the main changes of the AI sticker make render function, so let's go. Alright, so here we have our main function uh, that makes the stickers. I think I showcased this in the previous video, but I do, I'm going to do it again because I make some changes here and there uh, to better explain what all those. Uh, so yeah. So first of all, the make sticker uh, needs a source image and all the rest of the parameters are optional. Or if it's the procedure uh, makes up the fixed box, as I explained in the previous video, it cuts a square around the face, so the cropping model can be more accurate cropping the, the face. Here's where we call the model, and we get a mask and a mask kit, then we close the gaps using the morphology, morphology of OpenCV, this uh, closes gaps in the mask, so that's awesome. 
then we have here the mass cropping so here we we grab the face box and uh, with a bitwise and so a bitwise operation we crop uh, the original uh, face box here we have the contours uh, we find the contours with this uh, function right here uh, from the mask large we enlarge the mask a little bit to be able to to make the contour around around the border because co the contour uh, makes it inside and that i want to make the border outside the mask and that's why i delete the mask and then we draw the masks and this right here is really important because that that means that all the contours are going to be drawn so that's awesome i still need to make some changes here and there because so sometimes the mask uh, fails and there is too much components in the mask and i i need to select the larger one that is going to be the face so that's going to be a thing that i'm going to do in the future also i i have a couple of interesting uh features to this maybe do like a border border softener and uh, shadow but that's going to be in the future uh finally uh we this is where we make uh the png image or the alpha channel of the image because uh, we need that to be able to make the sticker with uh, a transparent background so we use uh, cvt color to transform from rgb to rgba and we and we set the the four channel uh, of the alpha image to be the mask times 255 because the, ma the mask is a binary is a binary mask and needs to be converted to at 0 to 255 uh, range we save the image if the save is true we return the image if we want to make uh, changes in line or we can not save here and save elsewhere so that's cool all right that was it for this part in the next part we're going to get the react app done we're going to be releasing the app to production in the first version ready so that's going to be awesome subscribe and give it a like to see that and i see you in the next one bye